Okay, it is a, a real pleasure to be here. I realize I'm standing between you and the beer and dinner, so I will stay on time. Uh, if you'll just get up and dance around when my time's up, that'll be good. So what I'm talking to you about is my collaborators. I have ne almost never in my life done anything by myself. So these are all my collaborators in the kinds of work that I've done over the last 40 years. Um, and including housekeepers, and child care, all of those things are really important, and I appreciate them. So what I want to talk to you today about, I'm going to start with why do you do science and engineering? Um, and that's because these are the skills that are, we really need to sustain life on this planet. And I, I don't know how many of you have seen the grand challenges in engineering on the National Academy of Engineering website. We have a whole course in this now for freshman engineers at NC State. But these are some of the questions on the left. And what we try to teach our students from day one when they get there is that engineers are really important to find practical solutions to make sure we can still exist. But they can't do it alone. They need not only people from other engineering disciplines, but they need scientists, they need uh, people involved in public policy, people in um, all kinds of walks of life, law, education, and just about what art, just about anything you could think of. I was almost an art major. Um, so, we, but we all have to work together. So what is important? If we teach our students nothing else, communication skills are probably one of the number one skills they need to learn. So when you work on big problems, you have to learn to think. You have to learn to phrase what the problem is in a format that you can actually come up with a vision for a potential solution. No idea is created good, it has to be massaged. And the more people with diverse opinions, diverse skills, diverse knowledge base to work on those problems, the more chance you're going to have to get a solution that really works. The other thing you've got to do is know your customer. Who's going to use this solution? And you should be talking to them right at the very beginning of trying to figure out how to solve that problem. Uh, you can't go in an ivory tower and come up with something, then, then throw it out in somebody's hands and expect them to use it. That just doesn't work. So all of those skills are really important. Um, so where did I come from? This is actually is me. I like to climb mountains in this way. Um, I was born in Kentucky, so horses are in the genes. Um, I went to Oxford. I had, plan I had been accepted at Princeton and was planning to go there. But I wanted to get my MRS degree. And my fiance won the Rhodes Scholarship. So. If I wanted to get my MRS degree, I had to go to Oxford, and I did. Um, after a year in biochemistry, I went into immunology, ended up at the DuPont Company, worked there for five years, uh, retired two weeks before my father. Um, I'm just now starting my pension. I'm a triple dipper. Uh, I spent 28 years at the Naval Research Lab, and that's where I discovered I like to make things. I was sick of writing papers. I wanted to do more to help people. And so I learned if I, I was very good at those visions for solutions, but I had never taken an engineering class in my life. So I recruited postdocs in electrical engineering, computer engineering, mechanical engineering, chemical engineering, and yes, even bioengineering. And they were very patient. Fran, this is a resistor. This is a capacitor. This is how it works. You know, this is what photons do. This is how fiber optics work. I got the chemistry and I got the biology. That they got that from me. But we had to learn together. We had to learn to speak to each other, to understand each other's vocabulary. And probably the most important thing, we had to learn which of us had knowledgeable opinions in which areas and when to ignore somebody else's opinions. You know, if, if two people always agree, one of them is redundant. So they, they also had to learn when to ignore me. Um, but you, you kind of get along, you work together, and um, you learn what motivates people, what 
how do you, if you're working with somebody as part of a team, how do you make them feel good about their accomplishments as a team player so that they don't go off the reservation? Um, these are some of the commercial products that came out of my group. Um, this one, the one up the little plane, is a detector for biological warfare agents. Uh, several of our systems were used in the Middle East in various conflicts. Um, we developed pollutant monitors for uh, monitoring groundwater and soil and remediation procedures. This thing on the right was an early detector for drugs of abuse. You sucked on it. We put it in portals outside nuclear power plants and in, um, uh, checked people coming in on uh, uh, parole, <laughs> all kinds of interesting things. The guy who founded the company that commercialized it wanted to check his daughter's dates. Um, <laughs> anyway, so, but what I'm gonna spend the last couple of minutes now is just saying all of that stuff is less important than the people that did it. So, I want to highlight just really briefly what the people who worked on some of these projects have done since. So Elizabeth James is amazing. She um, worked with me. She developed a test for sepsis because she just before she started, her baby had, was septic and almost died. So she was really motivated. She did a great job, then went to the CIA to be an analyst for three years. Then. She went to, Bo to Boston to work for a big computer company doing troubleshooting, after which she and her husband built a sailboat. She homeschooled her kids while they lived aboard the sailboat and traveled around the coast of the United States. She ended up in, in uh, um, New Orleans when the hurricane hit and decided maybe she needed a land career again. But from one thing to another, she's gone into education. She is now in charge of uh, all the training for the entire Veterans Administration. What, a, what an amazing career. She's learned to learn. That's what we do. We learn to learn. We learn how to learn from other people, and we can do anything. This uh, young lady I hired from Britain as a postdoc, she's now at the FDA and very involved in um, helping people do regulatory affairs, but she has become their leader in how do you get a test for Zika? How do you get a test for Ebola? How do you respond really fast? to um, emergency situations worldwide. Um, so I'm just, I don't have time to go through all of these, but I do want to point out that these kinds of careers do have a very global aspect to them. Um, this, this young woman who was a, a postdoc who only got away from her supervisor because I offered her a job, uh, she would have been a graduate, I think he would have kept her changed to the bench as a graduate student for two decades. But she went on to deploy devices to track antibiotic resistance across the world as, as it developed in different places. She, she's done some amazing things. Um, this young lady has uh, helped Scotts develop uh, friendly outdoor cleaners since she left. When she was in my, my lab, she helped work on a microflow cytometer. All kinds of things. So anyway, um, this is a young lady who grew up during the war in Bosnia, came and worked with me on uh, magnetic particles. Now she's uh, helping her country, um, as well as working for a company that uses very similar technology. This young lady's from Iran. She's now a US citizen. Um, and she's, she's a mechanical engineer, so she does all kinds of things. But uh, she l worked with me at the bottom of the ocean. So um, th there's all kinds of things you can do. She's an educator. Um, but you, the idea is to follow your nose. Opportunity is unpredictable. Look for the, mo the smartest people you can find to work with, uh, and they'll keep your brain going. Um, and just remember, no idea is created a good, a good project develops a life of its own. It surpasses us and our ability uh, to define it uh, and enjoy the ride. Thank you very much. <laughs>